Okay, we're solving this fascinating integral again, but this time I wanted to use my favorite technique, also known as the coolest way to integrate, the Feynman technique, also known as the Leibniz rule for uh, integration, and of course, differentiation under the integral sign. So it doesn't matter what you call it, what matters is it is extremely cool. So let's call this integral i. Now, before we define our integral function, uh, I would like to make a substitution because I don't like the uh, tangent of x in the denominator here. So let tangent of x equal t, which implies that secant square of x dx equals dt. Now, this further implies that dx equals dt by the secant square of x, which we know is 1 plus the uh, square of the tangent of x, which is t in this case. So dx equals dt by 1 plus t squared. So the integral i is now the integral from where to where exactly? Let's work out the limits of integration. So as x approaches 0, t, which is the tangent of x, will also approach 0. And when x approaches pi by 2, then t, the tangent of x, will approach uh, positive infinity. So the new limits of integration are 0 to positive infinity. And your structure, the structure of the integral was x by tangent of x. Now if this is t, then x should be the inverse tangent of t, right? So in the numerator, you have the inverse tangent of t divided by t, and you have a dt uh, divided by 1 plus t squared. Now to define our integral function, i as a function of some parameter a. Now where to place the parameter exactly? Well, the inverse tangent function has a pretty simple derivative. So let's place the parameter a as part of the argument of the inverse tangent function. That is, in the numerator, we now have the inverse tangent of a times t. And now we can differentiate with respect to the parameter a and switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators. Now, once you perform the switch up, then the total derivative will be converted into a partial derivative. So we are differentiating partially with respect to a, the inverse tangent of a times t divided by t times 1 plus t squared. Now, because we're differentiating partially with respect to a, that means all of the variables, including t, are held as constant. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity, and the entire denominator is a constant t times 1 plus t squared. And the uh, derivative of the inverse tangent is 1 divided by 1 plus the square of the argument, which is a times t. So a times t squared. And as per the chain rule, we have to differentiate a times t with respect to a. So t here is a constant. So what we have done now is we have canceled out the t factor and we're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of dt by 1 plus t squared times 1 plus a squared t squared. Now this structure of the uh, derivative of i with respect to a can be, uh, we can integrate the right hand side with respect to t very easily. And now that we're in the t world, the a, the parameter a, is just a constant. So we're going to have to uh, resolve into partial fractions. And notice that we have only quadratic terms in t. We don't have a mixture of linear and quadratic terms. So since all of the terms of the variable are exactly the same, they're all quadratic, so we can treat the case as if we had only linear terms in the denominator. So we have a by 1 plus t squared plus b by 1 plus a squared times t squared, which implies that 1 equals, oh, that was the highlighter, so which implies that 1 equals a times 1 plus a squared t squared plus b times 1 plus t squared. So if we let one of the factors, if we let one of the factors like 1 plus t squared equal to b equal to 0, it implies that t squared equals negative 1, which further implies, plugging into this equation here, that 1 equals a times 1 plus a times a squared times negative 1 is uh, the uh, negative of a squared, plus this uh, factor, this term was, this term is 0 anyway. So this implies that a equals 1 by 1 minus a squared. 
And now to find b, you can always assume some arbitrary value of t, like I could assume that t equals 0. So if t equals 0, then I can cancel out these uh, terms here. And I have 1 equals a. a was 1 by 1 minus a squared plus b times 1, correct? So this implies that b equals 1 minus 1 by uh, 1 minus a squared, which means that b equals mm, the negative of a squared divided by 1 minus a squared. So now that we have all our ingredients for the partial fraction decomposition, we can write the partial derivative we can write the derivative of i with respect to a as the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, up here we had the a term right which was 1 by 1 minus a squared divided by 1 plus I think we had uh yeah 1 plus t squared. So 1 plus t squared uh minus a squared divided by, um, oh sorry about that, it was a squared divided by 1 minus a squared divided by 1 plus a squared t squared and we're integrating with respect to t. So because we're integrating with respect to t, we're in the t world, so these, uh, these terms over here, these terms are just constants. So I can factor out a 1 by 1 minus a squared and we have the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 by 1 plus t squared minus uh, a squared by 1 plus a squared t squared. And these two integrals are pretty obvious, right? I mean, these uh, both the uh, integrals both these terms on integration give you inverse tangents. So first up, you have the inverse tangent of t minus, um, now if I write this as a times t whole squared, then I only need one a up here, so I can take the other as just a constant multiple. So a times the inverse tangent of a times t, and the limits of integration are zero and positive infinity. So from the upper limits, you'll get pi by 2 minus a times pi by 2, and the lower limits give you zeros anyway, so just ignore them. So you can factor out this pi by 2, and you have a 1 minus a 1 by 1 minus a squared term, and uh, in here you have left a 1 minus a. Now, 1 minus a squared, 1 minus a squared is 1 plus a times 1 minus a. So these terms cancel out, and you're left with pi by 2, times 1 plus a, and I think my food's here finally, so give me a minute. So now that we have the derivative, of, uh, the derivative of i with respect to the parameter a completely in terms of the parameter a, we now want to get back the integral function i. And how do you get back a, a function given its derivative? You have to integrate, and here we have to integrate with respect to a. So on the right hand side we'll have pi by 2 times the integral of 1 by 1 plus a with respect to a. And those of you who have seen my previous videos on the Feynman technique, um, you know that I like to use definite integrals in this case. So I'm going to look for some limits of integration. Now uh, the integral function was defined as i of a being the integral from 0 to infinity. That is a horrible integration sign. So the integral much better from zero to infinity. I know my handwriting is bad, but bad, but I still try my best. So uh, the integral from zero to infinity of the inverse tangent of a times t divided by t times one plus t squared. And we can extract some information over here. We were interested in the case where a equals one. And the case where a equals 0 is pretty useful because the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. So that means the entire definite integral will become 0. So we have the piece of information that i of 0 is 0. And this is the information that we're after. So I can use as limits of integration 0 and 1. So the left hand side gives me by virtue of the fundamental theorem of calculus i of 1 minus i of 0, which is just 0 anyway, uh, equal to pi by 2. On the right hand side, you'll have the natural log of a plus 1 with the limits of integration being 0 and 1. Now, this implies that i equals pi by 2 times the natural log of 2 because the natural log of 1 is 0, so just ignore it. 
So there you have it. This agrees perfectly with our answer in the last video. And in the last video, we solved this integral without using any fancy techniques. We just use some basic properties of the uh, definite integral. So I've provided the link uh, to that video in the description. Be sure to check that out if you want and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.